the more the stuff that we have that is wrong in our hands, the less power we actually will have in our head. What are some of the benefits of choosing the right way to get power? The right way to relieve stress. One, it's legal. You say, well, how's that so important? Because you don't go to jail. Did you hear me? Did you know that one of the reasons why they call it crack rock is because, have you ever heard the saying, getting two birds with one stone? Don't they call a kilo a bird? Getting two birds with one stone? Well, when you sell crack and one uses crack, you're getting two Negroes with one rock. Right. One, you're making a fiend for the drug. The other, you're making a fiend for the money. Yes. And don't tell me that the man that's a drug dealer is not just as much as an addict as a drug user. If it's not the case, then why is it just as hard to stop selling right. as it is to stop using? Because yes, an addict has been made. Two birds, one stone. Well, when something is legal, then you can't go to jail for getting it. Number two benefit, brain power. Using this as the real drug manufacturing company is free. I thank you for listening to that greet you in peace. That's all we need to hear. Because that's all, anytime we see on the flyer, it's free, we there. Is that right? Yes, sir. Free hot dogs. I'm going. Is that right? Yes, sir. Well, already free anything. Free candy bar. I'm going. I'm saying to do it right is free. That's the benefit. Next, building the brain instead of going outside the brain strengthens your family. Because now you have more power to deal with the management of human affairs. Is this true? If you're drunk, how are you going to help your baby with the homework? If you're blasted, if your head is busted, if your brain cells have been killed, how are you going to be able to give the child wise guidance on how to deal with conflict resolution? So whenever we are doing it right, we have mental power, focus, clarity, sanity. We can manage our families better. Next, it keep you from getting sick. Because everybody that's on it is, is sick. And it will help your appearance. Is that true? Yes, sir. How do you know a crackhead without them even telling you they're a crackhead? Because it's a certain look. Is that true? Yes, now, there are some crackheads that can trick you. I'm not saying that. But, as a general rule, you can, you, you can spot a hype when you see a hype. Is that right? When you see a Muslim... People always want to know, what are y'all doing for y'all skin? What do y'all put on y'all skin? Why y'all why have such a nice, why y'all have a shine on your face? It ain't a special lotion. It's a special truth. It's the building up of the strength of the mind. It's the development of a natural drug to deal with the stress of life from lifting the heavy wisdom. Of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that gives a shine to the face of a believer. So, we have in our hand right now weapons of mass deception. But we want to show you what blessings of mass construction look like. And this is what should be in your hand. Can we, can we see it? Or something's going wrong? All right, well... I will have to be the visual today. Is y'all okay with that? Yes, sir. This is the Holy Quran. Yes, sir. 
This is the best book in the world. Yes, sir. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. This is the number one blessing of mass construction. What I was going to show on the screen today was a picture of Master Farad Muhammad. The only picture we have of Master Farad Muhammad. Yes, Master Farad Muhammad is God in person. Yes, Master Farad Muhammad is the Messiah the world's been waiting on. Yes, Master Farad Muhammad is the Mahdi that everybody's been begging for. Yes, Master Farad Muhammad is the teacher of Elijah Muhammad. Yes, Master Farad Muhammad is the Good Samaritan. Yes, He's the only Arab that ever cared about black people. Master Farad Muhammad is our savior. Yes, sir. And we only have one picture of Master Farad Muhammad. Yes, sir. So Master Farad Muhammad, when he came, he only took one picture. And it wasn't a picture of him leaning in his Bentley. Or com coming out on his porch in his, in his mansion. No, sir. No, sir. Was it? No, sir. It wasn't him bent down showing off his joy. He sure it wasn't advertising no jewelry. Oh, yeah. Wasn't showing off no nothing, but the only picture we have is a profile shot oh, yeah. of Master Farad Muhammad, and he is looking down at the Holy Quran. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. He was born a regular human being with a special father that had gathered special wisdom from the 12 most special men of the time. And he had learned from the 12 major scientists, yes, sir. the elders of the, of the Bible, the we of the Quran. Yes, sir. He had learned the science of everything and then taught it to his son. Yes, and at the bottom of it, it says, the Holy Quran clothed in flesh. See, the goal of owning a Holy Quran, did you hear me? You don't own the Holy Quran because you paid 20. You don't own the Quran because you signed your name on the inside. No, owning the Holy Quran means that you no longer need it in book form. Your flesh becomes the new binder. Your heart becomes the new paper. Did you hear me? So in the supreme wisdom, Master Farad Muhammad said that all of the answers to the above lessons must be on official paper. Yes, sir. And official paper is not sold in Staples or Office Depot. Yes, official paper is the brain cells. Yes, sir. In Islam, they say that the way to respect the Holy Quran is that you should put it on the highest shelf in your house. Yes, well, what good would it be to put a book way up in the air where people can't even reach it? All it would do is collect dust. It's not talking about the dwelling place with furniture in it. The real house that it's talking about is the temple of God. Yes, sir. The human body. Yes, sir. The highest shelf in this house is the brain. Y'all with me? So having the Quran on the highest shelf is having it in the brain. Owning the Holy Quran is not having to pay the price for it but haven't turned it into an internal principle and law that you live your life by. Y'all yes, still with me? Yes, sir. This book, Holy Quran, is the greatest of all books because this is not like any other scripture. Every other scripture, is y'all okay? Brace yourself. It's hearsay. It is what somebody said that somebody said or what somebody is saying that they seen and recorded. Is that true? So you have in the Bible, in the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Four people with one man occupying one space at the same time with four different stories. Now how can you be at the same place at the same time with the same man and y'all got four different versions of what y'all looking at? It's because you see in part. Therefore you 
prophesy in part. You only can judge based upon power of perception. But the Holy Quran is not what a disciple said that a prophet did. The Holy Quran is Allah saying to his messenger. Allah saying to the believer. And when they come upon you and say this, you say thus and so. Is that right? So you are not entertaining a conversation that is the witness of someone that's seen something thousands of years ago and recorded what they remembered. You're reading what Allah himself said just like he said it. Oh, that's beautiful. The Holy Quran the word Quran comes from the Arabic word Karera, which means that he gathered together things or he collected things that must be read. The Holy Quran is the best friend of the Bible. The Holy Quran is the best friend of all the prophets and their teaching. Why? Because Prophet Muhammad was given the best of the Torah the best of the gospel, the best of all of the prophetic utterances of the over 124,000 prophets that have lived in this last 6,000 years, and he put it in one book. Did you hear me? So the Holy Quran is called the healing. Why? Because the same way a bee makes honey. That's the way God made the Holy Quran. Y'all with me? A bee lands on different flowers from different environments, extracts pollen from each one, then takes the pollen in within itself and purifies it, and then gives it that as one substance called honey that heals people. Well, when Allah made the Holy Quran, he landed on the Old Testament. He landed on the New Testament. He landed on what Buddha said. He landed on what all the prophets said. And he pulled the best of all that they taught into himself and gave it back into the form of Quran or honey yes, sir. to the Prophet Muhammad that we could eat it and in fact be healed. All praises are due to Allah. This book, Holy Quran, was revealed piecemeal over a 23 year time period. It's so powerful that you can't just memorize it or learn it all at once. Have you ever, in your home, plugged up one device to an outlet and other devices are plugged to the same circuit? And because the object you plugged in, when you hit the power, it had too much power, what does it do? blows a circuit. Why? Because the circuitry is built to only handle a certain amount of power lest it burn up. Well, the, the human brain also has circuitry. So when Allah was revealing the Holy Quran, he was revealing concentrated power that was packaged in words of wisdom. So he could not give it all to him all at one time. So let me send a little joke through you right now. Yes, then a week later, I'll give you another blast. Yes, I got to hold off because the last blast was so powerful. I got to let your brain circuitry recover. I'm going to wait a year and then drop another chapter on you. Yes, and it took 23 years for the brain circuitry yes, to be able to handle the power of the revelation of the Holy Quran. You say, oh, man, that book, all, that, all that's in that one little book. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yes, sir. The Holy Quran says that in this book, there is a similitude of every kind. 